built like I've just been building like a ton of video games. But like in 2012, I kind of started on this like really very creative path in life where I started just building stuff. Like I built like little things here and there, but I got like really intense about it back in like 2012. So. Okay. Um, yeah. And I started building web apps. So I won't even go into that. I built like so many things. I just <laughs> became like super creative and like, yeah, the video game development was like an evolution from all of that. So. Okay. Yeah. I know we've talked a little bit before about some of the web applications that you've made. That's also, honestly, it's just incredible how many different things that you've done um and how it's all kind of led you to this uh video game development i know you've created a couple of games one of which was um now my mind is completely spacing but it's another game that's whenever i first met you yeah net blast net blast there we go um, yep that was the first one um it's even just like hard to explain it, it was just such a long process of building it and it was just so deep yeah. um but yeah built net blast it was kind of like mario brothers i don't know mixed with like like doom or something like doom multiplayer it was like because it had like health pickups shield pickups um you know like kind of like this like small arena kind of fps feel but like with like but in like platformer view yeah so and that was just one of those games where i just kept adding like just so many random things to it that uh but yeah never really took off and then i built like this game power got an unreal engine um and then each game's always had this like kind of like inspiration to it. So actually, like Net Blast was inspired by Cave Story. You know. Okay, I don't know if I've Somehow. ever heard of Cave Story before. Yeah, Cave Story is like really famous um, indie game. Okay. Uh, built by this guy, can't pronounce his name, but. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I really love that game. Um, it's kind of like a uh, Metroidvania type of game, and built in 2004 by this one guy. Incredible music, incredible artwork. Um. But then, yeah, that inspiration turned into NetBlast. And then, yeah, then with, I'm like, one of my heroes is kind of Marcus Person. So I'm always reading his, like, Twitter. And, like, some of the stuff he was doing inspired me to build power. Um, I wanted to build, like, these voxel 3D destructible environments. But, like, mix that with, like, a first-person shooter. Um, and so that's that's what became power. Um, and then I chose Unreal Engine because I wanted to use, like, their visual scripting system called Blueprints. Okay. And I also wanted um oh dang, you're already here. Nice. Um I wanted to I wanted something with like built in native multiplayer support. I don't know yeah. why. Like I always tend to want to build multiplayer games. Like NetBlast was multiplayer, Power was multiplayer, Axial Drift is multiplayer. This is multi I always build multiplayer games. Yeah. Well it's the aspect of being able to interact with, you know, other people. Um that's really cool so many different experiences yeah. to be made if i looked up engines i was like what supports just what just has multiplayer built in and it's like unreal engine is the only engine out there that i know of that has like really good native multiplayer support you know yeah like every other engine um uh you have to like use like a third-party plugin or something like that so okay yeah so that's why i chose unreal engine got really good at it so i built power then I was like, I'm going to build a single player game and I want to build it in like a month. And that's when I built um, Atria Star. Okay. I love that name. Yeah. And that was kind of an interesting game. It's just meant to be, I don't know. It's just hard to explain. There's like a lot of components to it, but a lot of it was, it was just trying, I was trying to make like a really fun game. So I was like studying like game mechanics and stuff and trying to apply all of those to it. And it had inspirations from like Zelda, Grand Theft Auto, um, Doom, and like all these other games. Like, I don't know. That's how I work. I like, I come up with like, I have this like, like initial inspiration mm -hmm. and then I start like layering on like other stuff and like mixing stuff and like creating these like concoctions and then like a game comes out the other end. Yeah. This game, you know, it's, it's like command and conquer. It's like breaking the tower by Marcus person. Um, and like, I can't even remember now, like the other inspirations for this, but there's a bunch. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's even some stuff like from Atria Star in here, like the leveling up and collecting experience and stuff. Okay. So. Yeah, I do like how you added the like leveling up and collecting experience because in my experience with a lot of um, 
strategy games or RTS games. Um, yeah, I don't really see too much in the way of like leveling up different people and making them stronger. It's more of just how many people can you build and you know how quickly can you defeat your opponent before they defeat you. Um, so it's yeah. really cool that you have the aspect of you know you can have less units. I mean, you can even have a lot of units, but you have the option to level them up and make them better. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's an interesting. This game wasn't even meant to be an RTS in the first place. So, okay. What was your original idea for it? Um, I was playing. So, yeah, that was a, another one of the inspirations was uh, Vampire Survivors when that okay. game came out. So at first, I don't I didn't have anything. I was just like, I just want to build like a fast place kind of like. I was going to maybe make this single player at first. And I just wanted you to be like fighting enemies, and I thought like, oh well, like you know, I could bring in like the code from Atria Star, like where I'm like leveling up and collecting experience. I could just be a part of it, so I just threw it in just to see what it would feel like. Yeah. Uh, and then the game became like an auto battler kind of thing, and then I expanded the auto battler mode kind of, and then I realized the auto battler thing like gets really boring because there's like what's called a there's no agency, you know. Mm -hmm um like where the user can do stuff like make decisions and then that's where it eventually evolved into like an rts <laughs> okay so these games like they're like they're like weird they're like they're like they're like these weird evolutions of ideas and concepts and inspirations yeah um and then this game i'm actually using like all the artwork was made by um this guy like i think his name's like krishna so it's just, and that was inspired from Vampire Survivors because Vampire Survivors was all built with store assets. You know what I mean by that? No. What do you mean by that? So yeah, I like got super all, focused. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, go ahead. All the assets are like store. Uh, um, all the artwork are store-based assets. So in other words, like all the artwork was like bought off of like a marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so it showed me. I was like, you can build a successful game, a popular game just using like store assets you know yeah so that's another thing i wanted to do in this game so all the artwork like i didn't do any of the artwork but because of that the games became like kind of limited in a way mm -hmm. like i had to it, it added a lot of constraints on me and that's why the, the characters all look like these like nude little guys because yeah. that's like it's all the artwork that i had so i had to get clever and like use the you know the icons at the top left mm-hmm so the icons essentially are like the differentiators mostly on like some of the nude guys, you know? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. And then, so Michael started playing this with me in multiplayer and like the first game we had, I was like, it was fun. Like we had a lot of fun. I was like, wow. And then Michael sp spent like two months just like giving me just constant feedback. Yeah. I was like applying it. And um, yeah, and then the game became, I think, more and more and more fun. It's hard for me to play this game while talking, though, by the way. That's why I'm like performing so poorly. Yeah, no, I got you. It's really hard to to play these types of games while talking just because you get so focused. Dude, I get completely silent when I'm playing this. <laughs> yeah. Like usually with Michael, like I don't say a word. You know? <laughs> I got you. It's because like your brain, you're trying to like you know talk about specific things and then play all at the same time so that's why i'm like i'm so glad that he's talking and i can just focus <laughs> on yeah. uh the entire game yeah but uh no i yeah like this game it's been tough like it's uh like even now there's i'm like seeing like all these little bugs that like have been introduced it's like i feel like i keep introducing new bugs like every time i add something or fix one thing it like kind of like breaks something else yeah, like that's... I've noticed that the unit's getting clogged up a lot more, yeah. Um, because I've like changed like their collision a little bit, just like a tiny bit. I changed it, and now they're like clogging up constantly. Yeah, completely distracting me. I'm like, oh man, like, or that one guy started, you know, creating like a thousand units on his screen, and like, the FPS <laughs> started getting low. So that's like a bug I gotta fix. And yeah, that was tough. Really like, cool. RTSs I found like of all the games I've built are like some of the most complex games you can build <laughs> okay what makes them more complex than let's say like a first person shooter oh my gosh like because i've built multiple first person shooters you know yeah <laughs> i don't know like there's um there's a lot more like kind of like gameplay systems in a way 
Okay. God, see how they get, they get like stuck here. That's so crazy. Yeah, it's like whenever I first started playing, I, I put my building right next to a mountain, and then I couldn't like build anything. I guess. Like it doesn't it doesn't seem to do that anymore. But whenever I first started playing doing that, I was like, huh. I know. What to, I mean, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna have to figure that out. I know what's kind of causing this, but it's weird. It's weird that it like got worse recently. Yeah. And I, I guess it's just because they're. I'm like. I'm letting them collide with each other. That's the. That's the issue. Yeah. Before they were like allowed to kind of pass each other. Still, like they weren't fully colliding with each other, but they would still kind of avoid each other. And now, um. Yeah, that seems to be broken. It's so frustrating. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, there's a lot of gameplay systems in an in a in an RTS. Um, there's like resource collection. There's like all these different unit types. There's like buildings. There's like units and building units. The build menu. The cooldown systems. Like, you know, like stacking building stuff. There's like attack mode, defense mode. There's like um, there's like all the different units and all the different archetypes of the different units. Right. Like how they you know, there's there's a lot of like AI. There's like the procedural maps and the procedural like level generation stuff. There's like pathfinding. Dude, it's like on and on and on, right? Then there was like, you know, like the leveling up system and like levels and experience points and like killing stuff and like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. It's like there's so much going on, right? And then there's like all the multiplayer aspects of that. Um, yeah, and then like trying to be innovative. I don't know if all that makes sense. There's like the teams and there's like the whole connection scheme. Yeah. Piece. And um, dude, it just goes on and on like. And then if you want, you can, then there's like the entire like single player, like commander mode, right? If you want, you can, and like, yeah, it's just insane. Like that's like a lot of work. Um, but yeah, like with an FPS, there is some of that, but I don't know. There's not as much. I don't know. There's just more to this. Like as you start to build it, I know it seems like kind of simple, but it actually ends up being like super complicated for some reason. Yeah, I mean, this game, I mean, even like whenever you first look at this game, it's like, okay, there's trees, there's rocks, there's buildings, but then you start playing it and you can see like, okay, no, there's a whole lot more to this game. So, I mean, I, I, I've never made a game personally, but I, I kind of understand that, um, like where you're coming from, like just being able to like looking at the game and everything that you've added to this game, just how complicated it can be. There's so many different moving parts, so many gears, so many cogs to this machine that, it seems Dude, really complicated. So yeah, like when I look at the code, I mean, it's good. That's the thing. So I figured out like when you're building an RTS, like you have to write good code. Yeah. <laughs> like the key to it is 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 the code because it's so complicated that if you write like bad code, it's just the you you just cannot build the game. It's like impossible to like iterate and to like work on it and to get it working properly and to yeah to fix bugs and stuff. Yeah. Um, so luckily I had, I think it's good to have like a lot of gaming, a lot of experience and no like really good code architecture before you build an RTS. Okay. Yeah. It was surprising. I was not expecting it to be this much work Yeah. and it got, it got like, it, it definitely got like intimidating at one point where I started to realize like how much work. And then once you build it, the, you know, like the game, Oh my God, do you try balancing an RTS? <laughs> I can't even imagine that. Just, I mean, even with just like six units, I mean, you have to be oh. able to balance each individual unit. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah, so I use something that I learned from Doom called like orthogonal unit differentiation. That's like a, that's a really important term. That's a lot of big words. <laughs> yeah, but it makes a lot of sense. Orthogonal just means like, um, like at ninety degrees, meaning like like very different, essentially. Okay. And then unit differentiation, like so that they're different in very different ways, if that makes sense. Like different units are very different in how they act and operate. Okay. That's like really important in a game <laughs> yeah. because it makes you make decisions depending on like how a unit acts. You choose like, how do, how do I fight this unit? Uh, how do I like combine this unit with other units? Um, you know, and yeah, it causes a lot of like emergence within a game. And yeah, like it's ultimately all that stuff, like making those decisions is what makes a game fun. So yeah, like, like figuring all that out, 
like so in this game every unit's like very different right like melee guys like run in and like hit um you know the wizards like blow out like projectiles in different directions the arrow guys only fire in like a linear direction so it's kind of like chess right like where each unit is like very different in how it operates right yeah so yeah like but figuring that out dude like just the artwork is a lot of work the procedural level generation is like a hell of a lot of work <laughs> okay like i tried to like look up like like how like like i was trying to find like articles you know to give me some ideas on like how to do like 2d love like procedural levels and like there's nothing so i had to like come up with like the entire algorithm like all on my own you know dang i couldn't even imagine that yeah it was like really intimidating uh, uh but it turned out really i think really turned out really really good in my opinion like, yeah. i really like the levels the way they're generated so I love how it's so randomized. I mean, I, I love how you don't usually... I mean, you never get, like, the same level whenever you play. I mean, it's just every single time. It's either, you know, the, this tree, if it was here before, it's over in a different location. Or this body of water is in a whole different location. Yeah. Um, and it just really changes how the entire map is played, which is really cool. So that was a big challenge. And then, like, shoehorning that into Unreal Engine, you know, is, like, yeah. a big challenge. Because, like, Unreal Engine's not meant for, like, 2D pixel art type games. You know? Yeah. Okay. So figuring out how to get Unreal Engine to operate with it was really difficult. Yeah. Especially, like, the, um, like, unit animations and stuff. Like, Unreal has, like, what's called, like, a, an animation finite state machine. So it allows you to like transition between different animations, but it only works for like three dimensional characters. So I had to like find and down. I got lucky and found this really amazing plugin called Paper ZD that allowed me to do like 2D flipbook finite state machines. Okay. So that kind of stuff helped. And then as you can see, like already, like there's there's this like issue where like, you know, you're using the built-in native movement component of Unreal Engine mm -hmm. and how that um gets choppy because it's not meant to handle like thousands of units so like solving having to, i'm just left to like solve that another interesting thing that people don't realize about this every single tree and every single rock is like its own little actor in the game <laughs> really every single tree and every single rock is like managed individually okay and replicated and so yeah, that's another thing you have to figure out like how do you even like replicate all this stuff think about it like everybody's got to see like you have to see the same rocks that I see. And when, and when one of the rocks disappears on my screen, it's got to disappear on your screen. And same thing for all the trees, for all the buildings. And the entire level has to be exactly generated. Think about that. Like, you have to see everything that I see. Like, every plant, every rock, every tr everything's got to be exactly the same. Think about that. Huh. Like, how would you even manage that? Especially when it's randomized, right? Yeah. So you have to use what are called... Um, trying to think of the word now um determinant determinant seeds if okay. that makes sense they're called like streamed seeds okay meaning like when i all this stuff's randomly generated right yeah but it's not totally randomly generated right because if it was completely randomly generated then of course like you would get like a totally different random generation than i would right yeah the question is like how do we sync it so that like we both get the same randomness <laughs> that's crazy and that, and that the randomness we get is exactly the same so like that's a big challenge and like synchronizing everything over the network like that takes a lot of time and effort and, and energy and work oh yeah like how the hell do you do a fog of war system <laughs> yeah you know? you know i've never really thought about how fog of war works neither had i Dude, it just goes on and on and on. And, like, how do you even do that? And then how do you make it look good? And, like, how do you make it, like, disappear over time, you know? And, like, how do you hide stuff behind it? Yeah. Or here's another challenge. Like, how the hell do you get... See how the trees are? Like, how they cover each other up? Yeah. Dude, I had to figure that out. Like, how do you get the trees to know, like, which one's behind which one? And how do you get them to, like, layer automatically like that? because it's all like randomized anyway. It's not like I'm like physically placing them and telling them like what layer to be on, you know? Yeah. Here's another big one, dude. How do you make it so that the resources are like clumped? All that's on purpose. See how the re think about it. You could have like the trees, like think about all the different ways the trees could be spread out. It could just be like 
randomly throughout the whole level, right? Mm -hmm. Or notice how they're like clumped up in these clusters, right? Yeah. So I had to like tweak the outfit.